Hey guys, today I'm going to be bringing you some graphic novel recommendations. I'm still pretty new to graphic novels, but so many of you guys have been asking for some graphic novel recommendations, and so today I'm going to be bringing you some recommendations. I'm going to break this up into three different categories, or I guess you could say age groups. First up, we've got middle grade, we've got young adult, and finally we've got adult. Let's get started with the middle grade ones. First up, we've got Amulet, the Stone Keepers, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the author's name because I'm going to butcher it if I even try. This is the first in a middle grade graphic novel series, and we follow these siblings by the name of Emily and Navin as they move into their great-grandfather's house after the tragic death of their father. They quickly find out that their great-grandfather's house is not so normal. In fact, it leads to a whole another world. Their mother is captured by a creature, and together they must attempt to save her. If you've ever read Spider Rick Chronicles, this is a pretty similar story concept. It's definitely not the same, it has its differences, but it's got a similar feeling to it. This is perfect for young readers because of its pacing, it's never boring, it's always exciting, something is always happening, and because of that, the story moves quickly. It's adventurous, it's mysterious, and overall just a fun little story. The artwork in this is also really great. It really impressed me. It's kind of got this dreamy feeling to it and all the pictures flow together so nicely. The pictures are bold and really hold your attention which is obviously important for a graphic novel. Next up we've got Explorer the Mystery Boxes and this is actually edited by the same person who put together Amulet but this is also done by a bunch of different illustrators and authors. This is a rather unique graphic novel. It consists of seven different stories that answer the question what is in the box. So they each came up with a different story involving a box. It was so cool seeing all these different artists come up with different ideas as to how to incorporate a box within their story and I found this to be a great way to discover new artists because you're basically given a sampler of what these artists can do and how creative they can be and I really liked that about this graphic novel. This definitely helped me discover some awesome new artists. Now we're going to move on to the young adult graphic novels. First up we've got Through the Woods by Emily Carroll and guys I wasn't expecting this graphic novel to be super scary but it was super scary. This follows five different stories that in some way involve the woods. I wouldn't recommend this if you get scared easily because it's kind of terrifying at times. The artwork is what completely sold me on this graphic novel right from the start. The illustrations are stunning, full of dark and striking colors, and the images just flow together organically. Next up we've got In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. This book is about a girl who spends a lot of her time on this online multiplayer role-playing game. In the game, the main character, Anda, befriends a gold farmer who is a poor kid from I believe China and he's playing the game illegally to collect gold and to sell it in order to make some money. And when Anda finds this out she struggles with knowing what the right thing to do is. This is not the most mind-blowing story I've ever read but it's still got this really meaningful message about doing the right thing. This is perfect if you're a video game lover though because a majority of this book is spent inside of a video game and it's just awesome. The art style is vibrant and eye-catching. They used this very bright color scheme. Lots of bold colors going on with this one, which is something that often draws me into graphic novels. Next up, I've got Anya's Ghost by Vera Broskull. This is another creepy graphic novel, and it didn't scare me, but it might scare you if you're scared easily. I don't think it's that scary though. This is about a girl by the name of Anya who is kind of a loner and one day she falls into a well and befriends a ghost. But she soon realizes that that might have not been the best decision to make. This is a very simple and easy read and it's also got quite a nice twist to the story. Something that I like about the art style within Anya's ghost is that it's done in this purple tone. The artist could have easily chosen to throw in some color to spice it up a little bit, but I really feel like the colors they chose really fits this story. The art style itself is quirky and fun and I really liked the overall character designs. Next up we've got Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This story follows a villain by the name of Lord Ballister Blackheart and he's in need of an assistant and Nimona comes along who is a shapeshifter and she fills that need. Together they cause loads of chaos. Noelle Stevenson is one of my all-time favorite artists. I just love how simple yet unique her art style is. It really stands out to me. She's also just a fantastic storyteller. This story will have you laughing at times but also feeling all sorts of sad. Finally, I'm going to recommend some adult graphic novels, which I think that these actually could be considered young adult, but I feel like a lot of adults will enjoy these ones too. First up, we've got Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. This is about a girl by the name of Katie, and she is a chef, and her life is a bit of a mess. She's offered a do-over, and she jumps at the chance, but she soon realizes that she's making a bigger mess of her life by changing things. The thing I liked the most about this story is the fact that Brian Lee O'Malley took this story that's been 
done before and just completely reinvented it. It's humorous, but it's also got some darkness to it, which I wasn't expecting at all. I wasn't expecting it to go into this kind of dark place. The art style is amazing. Brian Lee O'Malley is such a fantastic artist. This one has me wanting to pick up more of his work because I was just blown away with the art style within this graphic novel. He's kind of got this weirdly whimsical art style. The colors are outstanding and the character designs are on point. Lastly, we've got The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. This story is about a guy by the name of Dave who lives on the island called Here. Here is a very organized island. It's very crisp and clean and nothing is out of order. But the second that Dave begins to think about there, he begins to grow this gigantic beard, which ends up causing disruption on the island. I didn't really have any expectations going into this one, but I just found it to be so charming and interesting. I loved how quirky and weird it was. This was just such an out of the ordinary graphic novel and I really appreciated that about it. I loved the art style so much. I love that the graphic novel is done in full black and white. It's almost as if the artist went and picked up a pencil and just started going at it and voila, he created this awesome graphic novel. So those are some graphic novels that I highly recommend checking out. I will suggest using the library because graphic novels are expensive. So check them out from the library, see if you like them, and if you want to buy them, then go for it. But graphic novels are expensive and they usually only take an hour to read. So I would suggest checking them out from the library before you commit to buying them. Let me know down below if you have read any of these graphic novels and what you thought of them. If you haven't, then let me know if you're gonna check out any of them. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Later. The ah. Hey guys, today I'm going to be bringing you This is not the most mind blowing. Mind blowing. Blind 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 blind. So those are some ah.